John John's currently in dispute with Dana White over fighter pay. Francis Ngannou in a recent interview made it clear that he wants his first title defense to be against John Jones. Speaking to TMZ Sports, he went on to say, Well, my message to John would be to get ready and to be serious and to put in the work because it's going to happen. The biggest challenge of his life. I won't be going in there to play with him like those guys have been doing. It's going to feel different. He can put whatever weight he wants on him. That doesn't take any less of my strength and my power. According to TMZ, the former UFC middleweight champion Anderson Silva recently signed a contract to face Julio Cesar Chavez in a boxing match in Mexico on June 19th. He last lost to Uriah Hall and was released from his UFC contract. John Jones recently responded to Dana White's comment saying that he isn't sure that he wants to fight Francis Ngannou next. He posted a clip of Dana White on his Instagram with the caption, What a great way to promote the fight. Let's just shit on John Jones and make him seem afraid. How dare he ask to pay serious money for a serious fight. Jorge Masvidal recently sent a message which was targeted for Ben Askren. He posted this on his Twitter saying, This individual I buried does not represent MMA. He represents all the hardcore and casual crotch sniffers. Hashtag and you. Ben Askren responded back saying, I've refrained for two years. But let's be real Jorge. You landed the luckiest knee of your life and I made you famous. You're welcome. You got 50-43 by Usman and will likely again next month. Beat it loser. According to Aaron Hawani, the trilogy bout between Dustin Poirier vs Conor McGregor is being finalised for July 10th. Maybe I should take a moment and address myself um, that uh, these are not rumors. I am definitely coming back. I'm very excited and super honored to be fighting Marion Renault for her retirement fight. It's amazing that she uh, wanted to come back and, and fight me for her for her last two rounds. So we're going to make it a good one. July 17th cannot come fast enough. Um, and you guys, thank you so much for sticking with me uh, through the period of retirement. Um, I'm definitely, I feel rejuvenated. I feel really good. I feel like the best version of Misha Tate is going to come July 17th. And I'm very excited to make this second run. I do want to be the baddest woman in the world again. So I'll leave you guys on that note. I love you very much. Thank you so much for the love and support and the warm welcome back. I'll see you guys. What's up guys? So I'm in my third connection. I'm gonna get my fourth flight uh, to get here to my city in Brasilia. And yeah, very thankful, very grateful for how everything went. Put a lot of hard work into it and it paid off. Thank you for, thanks everyone for the support. And it's always my pleasure to give you guys the best show I can give you. What do you say? Your shoulders are bigger than mine? Are you serious, Mikey? Are you serious? Put these shoulders, bro. Yeah, yeah, that's why right. I walk away. Excuse me? First day back in the gym and I did not work on wrestling. Some just never learn, huh? Video games, seven days a week, baby. That's me. <clears throat> all right, so we're gonna play Super Smash Brothers and we're gonna play three games, win it takes all. If you lose, that winner is gonna step up and turn that game off and you're going to bed salty. So these guys, they're going to bed with the salt. Salt. Yeah, you see Lucas out here? Number one, tell, tell what happened. Tell what happened. That's one. That's one out of three. Two. Back to back. I sent you. Sent who? I'm on the screen. What do you I sent you. I'm on the screen. Lost to me. What boy game? Last game. What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of Breaking Down the Fights. I'm here in beautiful Tulum, Mexico, and today I will be breaking down UFC 260. 
I'm, I'm gonna break it. I'm gonna be breaking down the co code, the co main event, and the main event. Let's start off with the dirty Q tip, Sean O'Malley and Thomas Almeida. I tell you what, there's things that Sean O'Malley does do right. And again, I'll, I'll rephrase it. He's great. He has great distance. His feints. He does his little thing with his head that allows people to. to, to he he tricks people because you don't know if that front kick is coming, that back, that spinning back kick, or if he's just gonna throw a right hand. But he does a good job with his fakes. The problem is, is sometimes you want to discredit the opponent that he's fighting because Thomas Almeida did not do anything man he's like a deer it's like it's almost like a deer in the headlights it reminds me of uh you know when amanda fought you know megan anderson it's almost like they're there but they're not there and there's no strategy involved because even though he did win the fight he's still leaving that front leg forward but kudos to him because now he has adjusted to be more southpaw but i would if i was fighting him and that would be extremely easy fight for me because i would continue to keep kicking that leg because he continues to lean it forward so those who fight Sean and don't do that, you guys are crazy not to kick that front leg because in the middle of that fight, Thomas did catch him. You can saw his movement change, but he didn't capitalize on it. But not not everybody's triple C. Anyhow, if I was Giannis, the up and coming superstar, the Mexican kid, I would I would call out Sean O'Malley and still still his shining out person. I think that would be an easy fight for him. Anyhow, let's get straight to the co-main event: Luca Vicente Luca versus Tyron Woodley. Oh my God, man. You guys watch out for Vicente Luque, man. The kid is impressive. He's got beautiful striking skills, great countering. He can take a hit, which is not always good. And he cannot be taking that, but you also want to credit Tyron Woodley with that overhand. And Tyron Woodley, they both had each other hurt. And the only thing I can say about that fight is typically when Tyron Woodley had Luque, uh, Luque, Vicente Luque hurt, he should have capitalized with shorter punches. In other words, he caught him with that overhand a couple times, but he continued to throw and the dude kind of caught on, caught on to it. What I would do is I would shorten it with, with uppercuts and left hooks and to make sure, you know, to, to be pretty much to, to sweep your opponent because at times when you have somebody hurt, straight punches are not the key. It's the short ones, uppercuts and the hooks. And sorry, that was my girl right there. That's my baddie. Let's get straight to the, the only person that could really beat the Santa Luca that I see is uh, the guy that he would really struggle with is my brother, the Nigerian Nightmare. Why? It's because Kamaru Usman, he goes in there, he wrestles, he strikes. When you think wrestling, he's striking. When you think he's striking, he's wrestling. He may not be taking you down, but he's wearing on you, putting you against the cage. And that's what makes the Nigerian Nightmare dangerous. Let's get let's get straight to the co-main event. I'm sorry, to the main event. Uh, uh, Stipe versus, uh, versus Francis Ngannou. I mean, what can I say? Man, it seems like uh, Francis Nugam in that first round. I, th I thought Stipe did a good job. Boy, can he take a hit. Stipe could take a hit, let me tell you. Um, allow allow somebody like Francis to continue to keep throwing power, but there's one thing that you cannot do with him. You cannot exchange. You cannot create a fight nor a flurry with Francis Nugam because if you do, he will put you to sleep, man. There's probably never, nobody ever in the, on planet Earth that has power like Francis Nugano. So again, guys, those are my predictions. Those are that's my take. I think what's next for Francis Nugano is to fight to fight a competitor like John Jones. I like Francis, and he's a good friend of mine. And so is John Jones. But man, John Jones is another animal. What makes John Jones extremely dangerous is the fact that he has experience, and he will not take the fight like everybody else is taking the fight. And that's what makes John Jones special. Is he's a he's a better competitor than he actually is a fighter just like Triple C. Anyhow, that is my breakdown of UFC 260. I hope you guys like, because if you don't, you guys can all do me a favor and bend the knee to King Triple C.